A lot of people don't really know what copywriting is. Why is copywriting important? Mike wears his nipple tassels all the time. How much should you actually write it? Hello. Welcome. Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about copywriting. Oh, boring. Switch Ooh. off. Copywriting. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly known as Biceps and Banter. And we're here today to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. Anyway, he's on one today, isn't he? He's having a, he's having a good time. Nah, it was last week. It was last week. Oh, sorry, last week. Yeah, because you do this every week. It's yeah. last week. Just put the same clothes on. And yeah, today we're going to talk about copywriting. Uh, a lot of people don't really know what copywriting is, I don't think. I think it's... It's basically uh, writing that's designed to persuade or sell, in essence, which is what I guess we're all doing with social media to a certain degree and email writing, all these sorts of things. You're trying to basically put your message across and, and show someone that you're right and you're correct and trying to get them to buy from you and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the persuade bit is the kind of thing that we're, we're going to focus on a little bit more, is that it's written in a way that's designed to make people like you, for want of a better term, rather than writing how we're always taught to write at school, which is very corporate and very sort of straight to the light, straight to the point and no um, fun, no humour, no engagement and just making it really fucking boring, uh, stuff that people don't want to read. So we're going to talk about how to make your writing readable. Yeah, um, probably not the sexiest topic, um, but don't switch off yet because... Um, Mike's going to take a top off. Yeah, <laughs> I've got some nipple tops on. Um, <laughs> now, what, why, is, why is copywriting important? You might, you might scream at your uh, laptop um, or probably put it on TV. It'll look better. It'll look, look better on, on TV, TV, I think. Eat take your lunch. Of us, you know, yeah. tag us in it. Yeah, and Actually, then you. join the members group, hit the link, and join the members group CTA, so. once you, you do that, if you're not part of it, really, it's because blood, so. you get even more of this good stuff. And Mike wears his nipple tassels all the time. All the, the time. Members group, Every so. members group call. You all good. That's yeah. it. It's worth doing um, for that alone. And, and a hard-on as well. So You can't see that, though, so I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, it's always under the table. Yeah. Why focus on copywriting? So the copywriting element of, for example... Uh, demonstrating a transformation and um, copywriting just in regular posts on carousels, learning how to write a good hook, being persuasive with your calls to actions and making um, therefore more people take action in the, in the direction that you want, whether it's to join your email list, whether it's to get a lead magnet, whether it is to join a group coaching, whether it is to join your coaching, whether it's to do something, being able to, to persuade people better, engage people through that, caption that that copy and then alongside that on email as well get somebody to get their attention get them to open up mm. the email with a good subject line to write a good hook to be able to tell a story to get a point across why is it important it's important because once you've got the framework of a good business i.e you're making decent content you've got a good lead magnet, you have an email list, you have a group coaching, you have one-to-one. -one. Being able to fill those metaphorical buckets up all comes from how you're able to write copy or how you're able to write content in a nutshell. That's why it's important. So we're going to cover some of the common mistakes that coaches make with their copy in their captions and in their emails. And we'll tell you what to do about it. Yeah, I think a huge part of this is that a lot of coaches have this sort of like build it and they'll come mentality of like, well, I'm in shape and I talk about training, so therefore people are going to want to follow me. No, nah, no, they're not. Your copywriting is the is the key factor within this. It's going to make someone carry on reading your posts. And it's, you know, we, we joked about a year ago. I think this has kind of stopped a little bit more now. I mean, it probably, it's probably still Instagram somewhere. I just don't see it as much. You know, the whole like one one line captions with a picture of you, you know, uh, from a photo shoot being like, lions don't care about the opinion of sheep. And it's just like, <laughs> okay, right. Boring. Um, but I think it wasn't that long ago the coaches were posting that sort of stuff, expecting people to be like, oh my God, I'm so inspired. Like, sign up. I want to sign up for your coaching straight off the bat. And it's kind of like, well, these days you need to stand for something. You need to kind of set yourself apart. And your copywriting is one way of, of, of doing that. And I think that one of the biggest problems, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see coaches make is that they make all their content. Um, and I don't mean it as in like the subject about themselves. I mean like the writing and the way that they, they frame the post. It's all about them or it's all about their client. And the biggest problem that, that coaches have is they do not make their content about the reader, the, the watcher, the reader, whatever you want to call it, right? But it should be about them primarily. You're solving a problem that they've got. You're highlighting a problem that they've got. You're providing a solution to their problem, whatever it is. But most coaches, like for example, if you do like a day in the life, they just do like, oh, I did this and I did that and I'm this and I'm that and I went to the gym and I... And it's like, okay, great. Whereas the better coaches do a day in the life and they go, one of the things I really struggled with when I was trying to gain loads of muscle 
when I was a puny little kid was that I just followed all the men's health magazines, maybe like you're doing right now, is that you look at the men's health magazines, you go from men's health to men's health to men's fitness, looking at all these superhero cover models, wishing you looked the same as them. I was there. That was me once. One thing that I did to change that, that you could probably try, is that next time you go to the gym, instead of doing your pec deck like this, try doing it like this. Because when I changed this, I noticed it was a huge benefit to me and my chest. And I really want you to get the same benefit that I got from doing it. And I think if you try it, you're going to get a chest like mine now. Not like me now, like, because no one wants that. But you see how I frame that differently versus just a uh, uh, day in the life. I went to gym today, really trained really hard and I'm fucking hard and, and I'm really strong. And I just did this with the pec deck and my chest massive in it. So yeah, just you yeah, follow me for more. Do you see the difference in those two things that I made up on the spot? And I'd argue that they're still not great, but more coaches do the latter than they do the former. I would say 95% of them, to be honest, from what I see. And it's, that's the biggest problem that I see is that coaches jump on some of these trends that people are doing and they, we say, tell stories. And they literally go, I'm John, I'm 25. I gained 25 kilos of muscle in 11 years by training hard. Make sure you train hard. Follow me for more. <laughs> it's like, come Dude. on, John. Like, yeah. That's not what we mean, We're mate. Not following um, whereas, the, the, whereas the first example I gave, you can see how someone might be like, oh, Okay, I do that. I do the mental health. I do mental fitness. I've done that. Okay. I feel shit. I feel puny. I use words that they might use because I know, <laughs> right? Trust me, I know. And you're not just saying, do you feel small? You're not making someone feel shit, do you know? Again, it's this this whole thing of like, could you just go so direct of it? And, and it's about, copywriting is about doing it in a way that involves the reader and makes them feel a part of what you're writing. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Certainly in transformation copy, like we see this quite a lot. It's the most common mistake that we see when new people turn up to our copy clinics that are every Thursday. What are the copy clinics, Mike? At 9 a.m., you know, copy clinics, basically for our one-to-one -one clients. Oh, exclusive. They turn up, they can submit copy, whatever they want. Could be an email, could be a landing page, could mm. be a CTA, could be transformation copy. They submit it, we critique it there and then live, you know, sort of. Comes naturally, really. How do so, I, how do I become a one to one client, Mike? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you, so you can't. Oh, full twenty twenty five. So if you're watching this in twenty twenty five, maybe reach out twenty twenty seven. Probably by then. Yeah. No, um, you message us on Instagram if, if you're lucky. But genuinely, like this sounds knobbish. Um, but there is a waiting list till next year. So. There is a waiting list till next year. In all seriousness, but um, yeah. So um, w the most common mistake that people make is they go, "This is Jake." Jake um, was struggling because he couldn't stick to things on a weekend. He, he didn't really have a clear plan and he had no accountability. So when Jake came into coaching, we gave him a clear plan. We gave him accountability. He worked really he hard. He worked really hard. He Never missed a session. Did, yeah, didn't miss a session. Um, I'm really proud of Jake. Um, well done, mate. Smashed it. Um, DM me for coaching. That is literally what people write. That, that's like literally it. Like DM me for coaching. Like, like, yeah, like that. <laughs> like, like, but when you say this is the thing though is that we laugh but when you say it like that you you get it but when you write it you don't think it sounds like that but you've got to remember that's how people are reading it that's the problem with coaches is that there's stuff in their head that they think they're saying but they're not writing it out they're, they're filling in all those gaps and they know jake and they know jake's problems what he went through his struggles his emotions his concerns and they know how good their coaching is and what happened and how they got around all these things but they don't write it so it just comes out like that and when you say it like that it's like well no wonder no one signed up no wonder. How should you actually write it? And again, this is this is off the cuff. Literally, there's nothing written down. Um, let's let, let's just see. And it's probably not going to be perfect, right? Because it is going to be off the cuff. But you might start with something like being training for years, but not really seeing the results that other guys are getting. You've tried numerous different plans: high reps, low weight, feel the burn. High weight, low reps, trying to get stronger. Nothing's really changed. Half the time, you're going to the gym, you're training hard, you pick seven or eight different exercises for your chest. Yeah. You definitely get a pump. It definitely burns. You've definitely worked hard, but actually you can't understand why you're not growing. Certainly like the guys in the gym. Is it steroids? Is it gear? You ask yourself, sometimes you might have even considered it. Is it your supplementation? Am I eating enough? Am I eating too much? Don't really know what to do. Well, that was just like Jake, who was struggling. He'd been training for years, just like you. Never really seen the results he wanted. That's how you would start to structure the start of that like i said just off the cuff that's how you start to structure it with a hook some pain points some feelings and you can you can go deeper into that you could go even deeper into that but you can start to paint a picture of what this guy is doing 
training for three hours at a time, taking supplements, not really understanding what they do, um, inconsistent yeah. with the supplementation. Like, think of all the common pain points. And again, like Dan said, think about probably what you used to do a, mm -hmm. a lot of the time as well. Like, because it's, it's really easy to relate to. And then think about what they want. Like, what do they want off of it? And then bring in Jake three quarters of the way down, like I did. I didn't talk about Jake at all in the beginning. So when you're structuring something, it should be hook, pain point, solution, person, call to action. Mm. That's the the way that you that you should be structuring it. It's being descriptive well and knowing your niche. So for example, like Mike said in that first example, like, oh, I str struggle to stay on track at weekends. Okay, well, that's every single fucking human being in the world, isn't it? Because they enjoy the weekends where they want to eat more food because they're off work and they're out of their normal routine Monday to Friday, right? And it's remembering, I have, we always have to say this to coaches all the time when it comes to understanding their niche, but even with their copy, it's like, stop being nondescript. For example, gaining muscle doesn't mean anything. It's nondescript. What muscle? Where? What body part? To feel what? So that they, and again, the same with the emotion. is like, people always say, oh, oh they were, they were, uh, are you sick and tired of feeling overweight? It doesn't mean anything. It does not mean anything. When do they feel sick? When do they feel tired? At what point of the day? How does that impact the rest of the day? How does that impact their relationships, their life? All those other things that are going on. Because that's what really it boils down to, right? Is that, yes, we're sick and tired of being overweight, but we're actually... We've actually got anxiety around the fact that we've got to buy XL jeans next time we go shopping. We've actually have anxiety about actually having to be anywhere where we might need to take off a layer of clothing. We actually have those feelings where we don't even then put ourselves in those situations. So people say all the time, like, oh, uh, ever feel like you want to just, you know, take your, take your top off at the pool and, and walk around all confident? No, I don't even go to the pool, mate. I don't, I don't even, don't even cross my mind anymore. Like, you don't know where your audience are at. And I think this is the problem that coaches face is that they just say words that they see other coaches saying that they think that people want to hear. Do you want to lose weight? What does that even mean? Yeah. What does that even mean? What? Chop your arm off? You lose weight? Well, no one would want that, would they? No. Right. So they don't want to lose weight then, do they? There's other things at play here. There's other emotions involved. And copywriting a lot of the time involves emotion. So saying things like sick and tired doesn't evoke any emotion. That's just a general state for me in my life. I'm sick and tired all the time. <laughs> right? It's like, is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it anxiety? Is it complete and utter desperation? Desperation, yeah. Like, what is it? What and what? When you talk about those emotions, what behaviours are then displayed from that? So, for example, if you say about someone who falls off track at the weekends, you need to display their week. You might say, "Look, I know Monday to Wednesday you're fine. I know Monday to Wednesday you're, you're super good, and you go super locally because you eat the chicken, you eat the chicken salad, you skip breakfast, and you manage to you know resist the wine in the fridge every single night when you come in from work. But that Thursday evening when you come back after your boss has had a right go at you, and you hear the wine bottles jangling as you open the fridge door, and you just glance down and it looks really crisp and cool, and you know." it would just settle that anxiety you've got for the day before you know it you've poured a glass you sat down you turn netflix on and you can't be bothered to get back up again because the wine tastes so good it's going down really really well and all you can think about is do you know what go really nice with this it's a really nice takeaway you sit there next to your partner you ask him fancy cooking tonight he goes nah don't fancy cooking tonight I've just described a scene that you can visualize in your head, right? With the jangling of the wine bottles in the fridge door, right? Those things. That is what gets someone going. That's what I do. That's what I do. Even if they don't fucking have wine and their beer instead, they still know what that feeling is like. Whereas what most people do, like Mike says, they go, can't stick to your diet at weekends. Well, that was like Steve. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and I'm like, which is going to invoke more emotion in someone? The bit that I described, where again, you could argue I went a bit too far with it, blah, blah, whatever. But I would argue that in an email, you can get it really, you know, across really well from that point of view. It's it's not enough anymore just to say that stuff. You have to paint the picture and you have to talk about the emotions of, again, the stress at work. Why do I go for that glass of wine on a Thursday, but not a Monday? Why? Why do I? What happens that's different? Is it that then the weekend, because I've eaten shit, I go into Monday and go, I'm going to be good now. What do they tell themselves? What does being good look like? It's not enough now just to say these things. You have to go into the examples of that. And that is going to lead to people reaching out, going to you, oh my God, it's like you're talking to me. If you say, this is Dave, he gained 25 kilos of muscle and he no longer cheats on his diet anymore. It'd be like Dave, he loves himself. No one's going, oh, that's me. No one. That's the difference. Yeah. They don't care about Dave or Steve or, or Jake. you either, like, to a certain degree. They, 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 they care about themselves. You only read your own horoscope. You don't read somebody else's. If you've ever had one of those personality tests, you love reading about yourself. So when you see things that are written down that speak to you, you're more likely to read them. Like, as are we. If you see something that speaks to you and where you're at, you're more likely to consume it. If it's got absolutely fuck all to do with you and it's about somebody else, 
Why would I care? It's like realistically, why do I really care yeah. about what they're doing? It's why the POV style videos get shared a lot on Instagram to their mates. Again, you've probably got mates. I know I share some with him. I tag him in stuff all the time. And it's all that that POV thing of like, this is how I was feeling, or this is funny, or this is a situation people find themselves in. Because people do that. People ask people to share. People share that stuff of like, this is what I do. Yeah, it's funny. It's everyone else. Nice to know I'm not the only one that goes through this. How many times do you get a POV video? Oh, yeah, see, not just us. And like, right. So now what do you think you need to start writing then in transformations? It's that, isn't it? It's that POV style, point of view. You need to write it from a point of view of like, what were they doing? Where did they find themselves? That needs to be about the reader so they can go, that's me. That's my POV. I'm reading it. That's the difference when it comes to copy is like, you're just writing out a POV style. But it's why they go so viral on Instagram. It's why they go so well. What is that POV when you're writing it? And think about being as descriptive as possible. Because those POV, POV videos, they don't go viral when they're just really generic, do they? It's when they're super specific. Remember that. Yeah, think more about the reader. Um, and like we regularly get people that start to change this stuff and they go, got a couple of people reach out off the back of that. Yeah. Like magic. So that's kind of like the transformation style stuff that you should be looking at. So to reiterate, hook, so make people want to read it. Like that's the first thing. Um, pain points, paint a picture, like story, offer the solution, back it up with the social proof, as in mention the, the person that's in the image, and then a strong call to action. So make them want to reach out. Mm. Um, obviously, there's only so much that we can do sat in front of a, a camera with a microphone. Um, for those guys that are clients that are watching this, come to the copy clinics because we can show you in real time how we would edit stuff how we would chop and change things out it's obviously very um it's a visual thing in terms of email i think there'll be a lot of coaches that watch this that have got an email list some of you haven't don't use it no? some of you have yeah but most people don't use it this is one of the regular things yeah i've got one there's about 60 70 people on it are you emailing no what's the point of having it like e email market well i don't see the point in doing that though so saying that you don't see the point in email marketing is saying that you don't see the point in talking to a warm audience. So stop making content then as well. Right. Yeah. What are you making content for then? If you don't see the the, the, the value in email marketing, because email marketing is basically assembling all of the people that are moderately interested in what you do in one area, in a position where you can then talk to them directly, where you're not prey to the algorithm and so on and so forth right you you're literally just grouping up all of the people that are interested in what you're selling in a place where you can be in their inbox and talk to them specifically right don't see the point of that oh make another fucking video then like yeah just go and try and get more new followers then yeah. they don't even know you yeah it, and that's the thing is that people are obsessed with getting new followers rather than getting their current followers onto the email list and I'm like, that should be the primary goal, number one. Again, we talked to before in another video about CRMs and funnels and all this sort of shit. It's like people just focus on all the wrong shit. It's like, get your followers onto an email list. Like, that's primary goal number one for, for so many coaches. But then the second thing to that is, the other reason that, that coaches don't email, don't know what to email. Yeah. So, Mike, if I've got an email list and I had to pick one or the other and you have to gun to your head, would you write more about your personal stuff or more about fitness tips? Personal stuff. Yeah, shock horror. So we talk about this on Instagram all the time about how, yes, like you need to show more of your personality, more of your journey, more of what you're up to and how it relates to people, right? Even more than that on emails, you need to be talking about personal stuff, personal journeys, what's going on in your life right now, how it relates to people, all those sorts of things. Because these people have reached out to basically say they want to hear more from you. And the assumption then is to go, well, I need to talk more about fitness. I need to talk more about what I do, talk more about how I can help them. And the reality is you actually just need to get to know them better. They're just signed up for your email list and they need to get to know you better. They want to read more about you and your life and what you're about and your values, your message, your mission, all those things. You can do really good client case studies on emails that work really, really well. That is your warmest audience. They should be the ones that, you know, when people come to creating content, I always say to people like, if I had a, if I had to break things down and I had to say, right, in order of importance, what do I think is, is you know, structurally, what's the highest priority each week? I would say email should be number one, stories are number two, and then Instagram feed post will be number three. Because emails and stories are where your warmest audience is and then the feed posts less warm and then again because you're trying to reach new people on Instagram and stuff like that it's just that what happens with most people when they get busier is that they carry on posts on Instagram feed but then they disappear in their stories and their emails and I'm like they are the people that are the most engaged and the most interested in what you have to say so email should be the first piece of content you do for a week if you're planning out a week's worth of content it should be the first thing you do 
Um, because they are your most engaged audience that are most likely to sign up with you at any point because they want to hear more about you, whether it's a fat loss guide, a muscle building guide, whatever they might have downloaded. They kind of already know that you're good at the fitness stuff because that's why they joined your email list. They kind of know that you get results with people. They just probably want to get to know you better and figure out who you are as a person and what you're like. And that's what the email list allows you to do. I'm trying to look through um, some copy clinic stuff to see if I can um, get an email that I've done. I don't think I have... I don't think I have one. Good job we pre-prepared all this stuff. That's 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 yeah. the great thing about creating content. Um, you pre-prepare it all. It's it's fine. Yeah, I don't. I don't think, um, uh, hang on. No, no. But yeah, the other thing uh, about copy as well, there. By the way, that I think again that that coaches struggle with because there's no real set structure or template. And we often say to people, it's about finding your own voice. Much the same way with your content. Everyone's got different styles of content. Same with email is you've got a different style of writing. Me and Michael have different styles of writing straight away. Now it's not to say one is more effective than the other. One is just geared more towards. Mike and one's geared more towards me and how I want to write and how I want to come across. Shock horror, I'm a little bit more grumpy, for want of a better term, probably. Uh, Mike's a little bit more jovial, a little bit more story-based. Funny stories have happened to him because loads of shit's happened to him, basically. Um, and I'm boring, nothing's happened to me. You or make, you just make stuff you up. You make funny stuff yeah. happen. I think the key thing here is to remember is that with email, you have even more license to be creative and be yourself. But coaches don't like that. They prefer being told what to do. They prefer structure. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. No, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. Same with content. When your content starts going really well, it's because it's you, it's expressive, it's what you're about. And it's exactly the same with emails and copywriting. It's painting a picture, right, of the of the story. So like Dan Dan talks, it just said there about like funny things have happened. So one that I would have liked to have spoke about was there was, we got an email that sent in that kind of compared fat loss to um, like a roller coaster at Alton Towers, right? Like there's going to be ups and downs or, some, or something like that. And then the way that I changed it was it was more like it was more being patient because the end result is worth it. And that patience was likened to the queue at Alton Towers. So I changed it. So I painted a picture of the queue of Alton Towers, right? In the in the story. And I made up the fact that a kid threw a hot dog at my face, right? And I was covered in mustard. Didn't happen, right? But it still paints a picture and tells a story because the end thing that you're linking it to is it's a pain in the ass waiting there's going to be some shit that happens it's not a nice experience to, to wait up but in the end the 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 result is worth it and then you're liking it back so you 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 tell the story and you need to elaborate and expand what i see coaches email emails is it's an even more boring version of their instagram content mm -hmm. somehow and then, like, so, uh, they manage it. Um, I've mean, done that. <laughs> well done. Um, it's just a longer, more boring version of an Instagram post. Now I know why you don't see the point in it. Get off him back. Yeah, well, you won't. Because you're just giving out fitness tips still. Like, even even more fitness tips. E even more of these. Just, I've kind of done everything now. Yeah, you will have done. But do you know what you haven't done? Is mm. said what you did last week. Because there's always something new happening. There's always something new that you did this week. There's always something that's coming ahead. You've got the riots that are going on, unfortunately, in England. You've got Love Island just finished. You've got the Euros. You've got the Olympics. You've got the um, the, the the female boxer who might be a male who's battered some other person, whatever. You've got Simone Biles coming back from, from some... You've got all of the current affairs that are happening right now, like literally just listed fucking seven of them, right? You can make an email out of all of those, and that's not even what's happened to, to me. That's what's happening in England and the world. Donald Trump being shot. Like, you you can talk about these things and you go, oh, what's the point? What's the point is that you're creating something that is your thoughts, your opinions, your sense of humour, your story, your take on something that your most engaged audience are going to read. And if you want to link it into a little bit of fitness at times, you can. Like, I can't understand how people can't see what to do. And that, don't get me wrong, there is an art to writing and you will get better and your hooks will improve over time and your storytelling will improve and knowing when to expand and knowing what link works will improve. And actually the, the guys that do attend the copy clinics are testament to that. So we've been running the copy clinics 11, 12 weeks, something like that, maybe maybe more, but, that. But, but, but not much more. Yeah, 16 weeks, 17 weeks, maybe something like that. The guys that turn up weekly... It's night and day from when they first began. So this is a skill that you can learn relatively quickly, like let's say four months. In the grand scheme of your entire career, that's that's pretty good, right? Nah, that's quite too long, though. Four months is too long. 
So, so you can learn it, right? And it does pay off because now that these guys are enjoying their emails, they're turning up to copy clinics going, really enjoyed it. Like, really enjoying this. Like, it's really good. I'm getting good response, getting good feedback. Uh, open rates are going up. I had a couple of responses to it. So, like, it's an enjoyable experience. And if you're enjoying it, you're going to get better at it. But the things that you should be focusing on are not tips, more personal. Like, more storytelling, more... Th- you more personality more sarcasm more ranty more sense of humor more like more of you like the actual you that's outside of fitness that's beyond macros and training in the gym like what did you listen to watch consume have an opinion on find funny what's happened to you when you were 17 or 18 like People are interested in those things and the sooner that you realize that more people are interested in things that they can relate to than fitness, the better. Because they do not relate to fitness because fitness is fucking boring, especially for people that need help with fitness. Correct. And I think with that, it's remembering that when you create your own style of writing, people start to... um, And also they indulge in your Instagram content through video, for example. They read in your voice. So like Mike said there about his stories about having the, the, the hot dog with the mustard all over him. It's funnier when you read that story because you imagine it's happened to Mike, even if it has or it hasn't happened. The point is the way he tells it is you can imagine him on a video explaining it and it would the way he would emphasize certain points, you read it that way because the way he writes. Likewise with me being sarcastic or grumpy, it's like the way I write is you can tell when I'm being grumpy, you can tell when I'm making a point because you know from watching my videos how I speak and how I sound. Whereas again, what a lot of coaches do is that they hide away from video on Instagram and then they start writing emails and they go, no one's really connecting, no one's really replying. I'm like, yeah, because no one knows what you sound like or how you're going to say those things or you write in your slang for example versus just writing proper english and all that sort of stuff again people get obsessed with that with with email writing it's like you want to actually be the opposite of that you want to actually write dumbed down real easy to read not difficult not hard words literally for for so that kids could read it basically because the average reading age is actually pretty low um you have to kind of kind of try and um you, try and the hemingway app yeah, the Hemingway app is really good. So if you just go on Google and type in Hemingway app, so H-E-M-I-N-G-W-A-Y, just in case you know how to spell, app, um, you can copy and paste content into there and it'll tell you where you've you've used sentences that are too long or you've used too many adverbs or you've used too many describing words or you, the reading age is too high. You want to get the reading age as low as possible on there. And it just gives you an idea of where you're structuring your, your kind of emails, where they're going wrong a little bit. And it's free to use. So it's definitely worth doing that. But um, How do you get the reading age down on um, blood glucose monitoring though? Yeah, yeah fuck don't, me. Don't write an email about it. Yeah, don't write that. Um, yeah. Exactly that though, right? It's remembering that most people, again, won't read shit like that because it's too confusing for them. But yeah, try and, try and do that. Look, if, if Mike can do it, it can't be that hard. Think, think so. about like, again, let's just go off that, that Alton Tower story, that hot dog thing. Imagine like the opening line is, shit, I thought to myself, as a sausage hurtled towards my face. Like, how do I get people to read my stuff? Do that. Like, didn't happen. It was, yeah, versus it, what people write is they write, weight loss is like going to Alton Towers. Yeah. Don't you stand that. in the queue for ages. Uh, no. It, you tell the story. It, it was a it, it was a hot summer's day. My t-shirt was stuck to my back and I just passed the 80 minutes to go until the ride sign. What could go um it couldn't be going much worse until the sausage clouted me uh straight in the grid. Like not only that, white, my white, white t-shirt, my white t-shirt yellow was mustard. now covered in mustard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like because you were going there, yeah, the same place. You just tell you tell the story. The the toothless wonder in front of me turned around and laughed at me as a kid had just um uh, had just attacked me with his brat burst. Like the leopard print leggings were were too tight, and she got a t-shirt on that said "hug me." It had a teddy bear that said "hug me" on it. I couldn't fit my arms around you, love. Like <laughs> it, like that didn't happen. But you can see why you would want to read it. And as you go through, you make the point of, I finally got to the end and I enjoyed the ride. The pain was worth the wait. That's just like dieting. You are going to have shit times. You are going to get the metaphorical sausage in your face. Like you are going to want to turn back around because it feels like there's 80 minutes of fucking too much to wait for this. You are going to feel like that. And you paint the picture, you tell the story, build it up. People think that, comedians on stage that all of the funny anecdotes that they have happened to them rarely ever did these funny anecdotes happen like i don't know whether this is news to people but funny stuff doesn't just happen to comedians comedians know how to tell stories so they're telling funny stories but they're saying it happened to them 
because it makes it more relatable because you can then paint the image of fucking hell. I got smashed in the face with a fucking sausage. She turned around, she got fucking three teeth in her face and she was laughing because her son had just fucking launched at me. Like, that didn't happen, but you can fucking visualise it. It's, it's a funny image, right? It's just that whole thing of like, whereas what Kirsch would do is, right, weight loss is like going to Horton Towers. You go on a ride, there's going to be ups and downs and round the corner and you're going to feel a little bit sick at times, but it'll be worth it in the end. So make sure when you're dieting that you stick to the diet for long enough that you see the results you want to see. Uh, and if you need help with that, just just reply to this with the word coaching. I can do it because I'm really good at my job. It's like, that's what coaches do. And they go, oh yeah, emails are shit. And it's like, yeah. It, it, it's, that, it's that painful and it's that obvious. And I think sometimes what coaches need to understand is that copywriting as a skill, uh, certainly with online coaching, is that, we need to take the fact that you can coach and get results as a given. That's, that's a given, right? The amount of skills that you need to upskill on, the amount of things that you need to, to do to improve your business are actually really unrelated to nutrition and training. They're not nutrition and training based. It's not about your coaching anymore. It's about your ability to do things like this. If you can get better at copy, you can get better at writing this stuff. Your, your, your video content and your script writing, all that sort of will improve as well. Your ability to get your message across will improve as well. So this is why it's such a fundamental skill and why it's so important. But... Um, just run out instead. It'll probably work better. So just do that. <laughs> Most coaches focus on the trust element, don't they? Like, yeah. like they think that the more that I show my knowledge... The more I shout that I'm good at what I do and that I know stuff. The more that they trust me. Yeah. You're missing the like element. Because there's a co if there's a coach out there that, yeah, you trust that, you know, they can get me a result, but I don't know them and I don't like them. I'm probably mm -hmm. not going to pay them money and I'm probably not going to want to chat to them. Don't miss the element of, of like... You're missing the element of like, most coaches are too down the line, too professional, too fitness. It's too stuffy. We've seen it happen. We've been in business with people that are like that. It doesn't work. Focus on the element of like. There's a reason why your friends like you, right? Your friends like you because of your personality. They don't like you because you're in fitness, but I bet, that you would, I bet you they would ask you for fitness advice should they need it. Why? Because they like you. You're their friend and they trust, they trust you. It's the same thing. Make the, the audience your friend and then they will buy off you. Yeah. That's Stop it. it. We've got to go. Wrap up. Wrap up. We've got a good day, one. full day now. So. Yeah, I just got to do some work now. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, the, that's the fun part of the day. Now. Like it and that. Um, Share us around with yeah, people. Subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Makes all the group. difference to us. All of that. Do it all. Cheers. Catch you later.